today's video, I will talk about work travel as a writing mother. And yes, we'll get to the poetry of it. But first, let me tell you this. When I returned from this work trip to France, someone asked me if I enjoy the traveling. I wasn't sure what to say because while I'm grateful for the opportunities to do what I do, work travel is very different from traveling for leisure. On the way to Arles, Hmm? Trying to get in touch with my host. Why is it taking so long? No, I don't think so. He's trying to find out if uh, he can get me a driver. There seems to be no drivers available. We had to get a chauffeur-driven car, which was twice as expensive as a taxi. Maybe there was another way, but it was my first time in the south of France. I don't speak French. Even my Airbnb host didn't speak English. Then do it now, you have five minutes. Also, um, Mom, you, you know tomorrow? Yes. Well, there's going to be a second day where I'm wearing the second dress, right? I was running late for the champagne reception opening of the exhibition. I had been commissioned to narrate. My daughter kept asking questions about what she should wear tomorrow, while in my mind I was stressing out about how to get to the place, since even the chauffeur guy didn't speak a word of English. So I couldn't explain to him that I would need him to come back and take us to the exhibition. So this is the outfit for the day. I think. Sarah, do you want to show yours? No. Okay. I kind of feel like bigger than when I was... So I can walk, everything is okay, but sitting is, is, is challenging. Sitting down. Little did I know that sitting was not part of the program though. So the dress was perfect for the job. Anyway, I finally called the team and they sent someone to guide us to the venue. It turned out that Arl is mostly a walk-in city. Many areas are pedestrian-only zones. So, so who comes apart from photographers and... Publishers. Uh, museums, uh, a lot of uh, galleries, uh, enthusiasts, yes, but this week is the professional week. Ah. So actually, it's open to the public, mm -hmm. but you have a special program this week for all professionals. Uh, in, in school, for example, mm -hmm. there is a very classical behavior. Mm -hmm. When someone is speaking without any accent, mm -hmm. they are like three little mocks. Oh, they are. After the opening, there was a long break, so we went sightseeing. Thank you. 
Do you wish you spoke French? After sightseeing, we went back to the apartment to change and relax. My plan was to return for an after party, but I was tired and decided to pass. I wanted to prepare for the next day, rest, sleep and sort out what to wear, especially because of the photo shoots. Let me show you what we are going to wear tomorrow, I think. So today I was wearing this, the dress I had made in Ghana, and tomorrow, oh, it's the other way around, just to give you an idea. So, different colors of these faces, I mean, it's just, I just thought it was such a perfect blouse to wear. Blouse slash dress, I don't know what it is, but I'm going to wear it as, I, I don't know. But yeah, it's so cute, it's perfect for mixed heritage, different colors of faces. Yeah. And I got it in Poland, actually. Yeah. And this I got in Ghana, as you know, if you watch my channel. So while I was relaxing, my daughter went for a walk. After about an hour, she called me, almost crying, saying her phone was about to die, which it did, cutting our conversation short. I also nearly died from stress because it was 10 p.m. on a Friday night in a foreign country oh and gosh. neither of us spoke French. But somehow she found her way back. You must be kidding me. Do you know why? Because I've just called the police. I've just called everybody. I've literally called everybody now. Let me explain why I was so frustrated with her. It wasn't because she got lost, but because I had asked her several times if her phone was charged. And she repeatedly insisted it was, in that dismissive way teenagers do when they want their parents to stop nagging. Then she went out and of course her phone died. So, today has been a day that I will never forget. <sighs> The plane is delayed, because why not? We get to Arl. There is no taxis, there are no taxis available whatsoever. Ah, I got pickpocketed in Marcel. I, I do believe it was the, it's the first time in Europe. I had an oyster card in my, in, in a bag, it's a small bag, it's a document bag where I've got all my documents. I used that oyster card to get to the airport, Gatwick airport, there is a train. So I got it for that purpose, and it was in front of the bag, but the pocket was closed. They stole it, they stole the oyster, probably thinking, they must have been thinking it was a bank card or something. But I don't even know how somebody could have done that, because that bag was on me at all times. So somebody must have literally unzipped it, the top pocket, while it was on my body, hanging across my body. And, and they must have taken the oyster thinking it was a bank card, which it wasn't, so they are probably very disappointed right now. In the south of France, day one, the moment I stepped on the soil, I got stolen from. Well, it's not a lot, there was like 17 pounds on it, but I would rather have it than not. But anyway, moving on. My daughter, who's with me, she's a student of art and design. Okay, she goes for a little walk towards the evening. I told her half an hour, you must be back. Just go around here, have a look at the place. You know, it's, um, it's her first time here. So it, it, it's, it's my first time as well. So I told her, just go around here and come back within half an hour. So she's like, yes, 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 I'll be back, I'll be back. So she goes and she gets lost and her phone dies. So, so I'm, I'm losing my mind. I'm calling people, um, thinking what to do, because it's dark. It's like super, super dark already. Um, I called the police, the police in Arl, but um, they don't speak any English. You know, I can't. I need to get back to this later. It's too much. It's too much. 
Let me pause and finish my story, which I couldn't finish at the time. It was almost midnight and I was utterly exhausted. While she was trying to find her way back, I couldn't do anything apart from praying, which is probably one of the most frustrating things for a mother. When I called the police, they kept saying, Francais, Francais, no English, no English. I was begging them to understand me, but they couldn't and wouldn't. Even now I want to cry when I think about this, but all is well that ends well. Also, this whole thing provided me with a good story for this work, travel as a writing mother blog. Let's move on to day two. Day two was much more fun. It started with an early morning photo shoot for a magazine whose name I can't remember. Then there was another, this time a portrait shoot for Whitewall. Afterwards, I had breakfast with one of the photographers, then came back to relax for a while before heading back to the venue for a panel discussion. What is the horse doing here? Maybe not only compared to the Afro-European identity, but you can also see it in different other shows all around the globe if you go to, to um, the museums, that it's um, the boundaries also between the disciplines uh, start to blur. And I think this is just necessary to do because now if we look uh, through the history of uh, humankind, we have a lot of information, but um, often they stuck in one corner and we need to rediscover them. And I think in, um, in the art scene it was a long time the same, like we, we talked about um, paintings, we talked about sculpture, we talked about photography, but um, it's just necessary how it is also going and um, to break these boundaries. And um, this is also why we decided here to invite also a writer and not only show photography positions um, to to also stand for, on, on the one hand, to stand for an open-minded community, but on the other hand, of course, as we are living between the nations, it's just a necessary step to also think this through the contemporary art and to, to think about yeah, breaking the boundaries there too. Mm. <laughs> it's, like me. it's like the missing artist is taking a video. <laughs> missing video. Yeah, missing video. That's all right. Don't, miss, don't apologize. <laughs> do, you to, do you want to say what you do? Introduce I'm, yourself. I'm, I'm a vegan. I'm a photographer. I'm a great photographer. And I work also for White Wall, which is a super photo lab which you to print your own photos. Yeah, <laughs> and we've just changed the world. Exactly, you. yes. <laughs> We're going to change the world. We have done it. We've yeah, just we've, done it. Yeah, we've done it. We've already. done it now. We've done, we've done. Totally. <laughs> the world, the world has art. been changed. It's super beautiful. Here. It is, absolutely. <laughs> the world has been changed. Yes. We are in our... Exactly, with our arrivée. Uh, <laughs> this is a deep hell to be expressionless, to leave emotion inarticulate, to guess some form of love or joy or hate, shadowed in an imperial loveliness, behind the hurrying thoughts that crowd and press, 
to track, to follow, to lie down, to wait, to wait, to wait. This moment, yearning and thoughtful, sitting alone, it seems to me there are other men in other lands yearning and thoughtful. It seems to me I can look over and behold them in Germany, Italy, France, Spain. So today is the last day in the south of France. I am going back to London, first to Marseille and then to London. But right now I'm just going back to have one more final look at our exhibition and then um, at other exhibitions as well. Yep. Al is where we are. And that's the journey. It's been beautiful, but it's over, or almost over. If only I could walk in your shoes today. Today I am spread to thin. Spread across multiple locations, caught up in the same narrations of who. Our exhibition on the vastness of our identities will run until September 29th in Arles, France. But as far as my channel is concerned, I am thinking about bringing you more work, travel or work related vlogs from London. So please let me know if you'd like to see more. Day three of this work travel as a writing mother trip was mainly about travel, heading back to Marcel to catch the plane to London. The flight was delayed again, <laughs> causing us to arrive home six hours later than planned. However, before leaving Arles, I managed to have a conversation with Verdiana, the curator, about mixed-race Afro-European identity and art. I posted it last week, so please watch it if you haven't yet. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. My mind is the word half cast. I've been in China for half a year and I always felt like, yes, you know, I'm not from here. You can see it. I know that. But um, it was also not the question. And my personal approach in Germany was always to fit in, to be part of the society and not also always to be a question about that.